Welcome back to another edition of the Pitch Putt and Puff Podcast. My name is Roger, a.k.a. RGB. Appreciate everybody tuning in tonight. Before I bring on our guest, um, just want to take a quick second and give a couple shout-outs, not only to our sponsors, 420 Bliss, located at 740 Hoosick Road in Troy, New York, right up in the Walmart Plaza. Make sure you stop in there and check them out. Make sure you let them know the Pitch Putt and Puff crew sent you. They have everything you're looking for, flowers, pre-rolls, edibles, vapes, uh, cartridges, disposables you name it they got it they got the drinks up there so stop in there check them out uh also check out trouble off the t.com marty over there he's got the book uh, available on spotify so make sure you check that out as well as his website trouble off the t you can use promo code rgb for 15 percent off site wide as well as a limited time offer on the polos you can use promo code puff um, for buy one get one free on the polos but I also want to give a quick shout out to Squares. My man Bob from Squares had him on a couple weeks ago. Uh, I've been wearing these for about a week now. Really nice, slick golf shoe. Got the got the spikes right in there. Uh, it's been a little wet. These things. I was playing in the molded the molded Nikes before. I was using the golf kicks a little bit. Um, the stability of this shoe, everything. Shout out to Squares. Make sure you guys go check out Squares. Um, really, really, really nice golf shoe. Uh, got the front the square, obviously. See if I can get you a better look at it. But yeah, this is a uh, this is a nice golf shoe. Shout out to Squares, appreciate you. And then also got to give a shout out to my man Jordan over at the Putter Shop. Really appreciate the Putter uh, cover from the Putter Shop. So make sure you check them out. Really cool. Got the magnet attachment and a few ball markers in here so and some stickers so shout out to the putter shop we appreciate you got the ball marker here um but yeah tonight we're gonna get into some clothing gonna bring on the divot crew so uh yeah stay tuned here we'll bring him on shortly i uh, appreciate everybody tuning in i appreciate uh appreciate all the listeners followers the whole nine yards trying to mix up the guests for you just going to keep pumping them out here um get a lot of cool guests on and it's been a pretty good time and also don't forget to check out the new york legends club um available on instagram trying to build this thing up a couple more people signed up today so the spots are running out so make sure you take available uh take the opportunity of the available free spots still got about seven eight of them left so make sure you hop on and uh, take advantage of that but well, yeah, we'll bring on the Divot crew here in a few minutes. Thanks for tuning in. Welcome back to the Pitch Button Puff Podcast. Uh, like to take a second here, introduce my guest from the West Coast. We got the Divot crew. We got Sean from the Divot crew. What's up, man? Welcome to the podcast. What's up, brother? Hey, I appreciate you having me on here, and I appreciate you letting me come in and talk on this awesome podcast today. You feel me? Thanks, man. I appreciate you. Yeah, man. I seen you guys uh, on Instagram about a week or so ago, a couple weeks ago now, and I was checking out some of the gear like what i seen wanted to see what you guys were all about so why don't you tell us a little bit before we get into the company uh how you got into the game of golf yeah bro um honestly golf is crazy because when i grew up i i never played no golf um i played a lot of sports like football basketball baseball um once i got into like the corporate scene that's when i started like getting into golf because people were like hey you gotta go out and golf this is mad and i'm like all right, I was, in my head, I'm like, that's an old man sport. Like, yep. I'm not getting into golf, you feel me? Yep. I'm like, all right. And then um, I, like, started getting into it because my boy got into it. Um, he's the one I actually launched a brand with. And he's like, yo, just come out and golf. Like, come try it out. And obviously, like, me being competitive, like, when I first got into golf, I wasn't good at it. I'm still not that good at it. No, mm -hmm. I don't think anyone is actually that good at it. But Right. Um, it yeah, depends well, on what you define as good. That's what exactly, you, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It depends on what your definition of good is. Yep. I think I'm good for where I'm at right now. It's the same. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I really didn't like – so just the challenges of golf alone, like kind of what got me into golf. And then also like marketing too, like in like networking because I realized how many people that golf and like in that older generation and younger generation, I was like, oh, damn, Again, like that older, younger generation, um, I think it's more popular now. Like, I think golf is getting more mainstream now. 
yep. um, compared to what it used to be. Cause I feel like when we think of golf, we think of like Bob, the Bob Barker and like, yeah. uh, all them old heads that just golf. So I, yeah. once I started getting into golf and seeing like NFL athletes and like NBA athletes golfing and like rappers golfing, I was like, oh damn, like I'm about to get into golf. So, and I fell in love with the game. So it was fun. And it, that's true too. There's everybody out there from the Tony Romo, Steph Curry's, you know, you see, uh, you see them all out there. And then you got uh DJ Khaled out there golfing now. It's crazy. Bro. Everybody golfs. Everyone, everyone golfs now. It literally, I swear it like blew up overnight, bro. Yeah. And like, like they got rappers like Schoolboy Q golfing. Yeah. They got J.R. Smith golfing. Like, it, if yeah. I would, if you would have told me, I would have been watching NBA, and then I'd been like, all right, J.R. Smith is gonna be a golfer, bro. I'd have been like, nah, no way. He's um, like one of the last people you would have thought you would see in a country. Exactly, bro. bro. Like J.R. Smith up tatted shit. up to his neck. That's yeah. what I'm saying. He tatted up to his neck, and um, and like seeing J.R. Smith golf and now he's playing at a collegiate level like and mm-hmm. that's crazy to me so I was like oh yeah now I definitely got to get into golf so it, it, it's it's fun and it's challenging so that's why I like to get into golf and it's and it's good to hang out with the boys too like if yep. you just want to get away just hang out with the boys so it's, it's a good time yep so because same thing with me man football baseball basketball my whole life um got to the point where I was playing basketball in a men's league and I was I was guarding like this 18 year old kid fresh out of high school and he's just zipping back and forth on the court. I'm like, yo, I just came off my eight hour shift doing construction. I'm exhausted. Like, yeah, I, nah, this it's... Kid I was like, yo, I'm going to go play some golf and do something different here. Yeah. So that's kind of how I got into it. And I just started, you know, same thing. I started I sucked when I first started. Now I'm shooting. In the, I'm like a mid 80s golfer. Um, See, that's good. I think yeah. that's good. Yeah. Mid 80s is good. Like I'm trying to break 90 right now. Okay. So like I'm like shooting ninety twos, ninety fives, and like I'm getting close to breaking ninety. So I'm like, right once I break ninety, I'm like, oh damn, like I'm I'm a good golfer now. You feel me? Yeah, you right. Mid eighties, you're a good golfer now. That's exactly the feeling I had too. Like, all right, especially some of the guys I put when I first started playing. These guys are shooting in the seventies consistently, and I'm like, yeah, no. All right, but then you take it to the point where you just watch what they're doing and try exactly. to replic- replicate some of it, but put your own style to it. And it really yeah. comes down to just like around the greens is my, was my biggest struggle, putting and chipping. And then once yeah. I started cl- pra- actually practicing that, opposed to just going out, hitting the ball five, 10 minutes before my tee time, and then going, like actually going out and practicing, it makes yeah. a huge difference. It's night and day. And I, I got buddies <laughs> like that too. Like one of my buddies is, uh, he's like, like semi-pro golfer. He like shoots like two under, he's a scratch golfer. So he'll go out okay. there and like wreck, wreck course. And, mm-hmm. um, he was just telling me, and, like, my biggest problem was getting off the tee box. And I was like, yo, like, I'm taking – if I'm hitting 18, like, 18 strokes off the tee box and I'm only, always getting out of bounds, I'm taking a stroke off there. So I was like, I just got to figure out how to get off the tee box. And then that just takes 18 strokes off my game right there because now I'm in play instead of always dropping in and taking, a, like, an actual stroke. So yeah. um, me going to, like, the actual, like, driving range and working on my – my driver and like my three wood to get just off the box. I was like, all right, cool. Like once I got that down, I was like, my short game and my putting is like pretty dialed. I'm not going to lie. Like I two putt um, for the most part, like there's one cases where I'll three putt, but like mainly it's one or two putts. Um, and my chipping is pretty good, but like that coming off the driver, bro, that was, that's, that was just wrecking me. So like now I'm slowly getting into the range and like understanding like my swing. Cause like, you know, we got the baseball swing. So that's like, a- Yep. You got that, like, you coming over, yeah, that's yep. going crazy. So, yeah, just understanding, like, the mechanics of, like, how to swing was a lot different than, like, what we're, like, taught in baseball and stuff like right. that. So, it breaking, was cool. So, breaking those habits of baseball was, was the hardest part, for sure. Exactly. Because, like, it's it's crazy to just, like, keep that keep that arm tight to your body. And you want to crush it, too. Like, as dudes, yep. you just want to go out there and just smack it. And then my boy was just like, yo, let the club do the work. And then, like, It'll do itself. So and I started slowing down, and I was like, "All right, damn, like that's still going pretty far." So I was right. like, I, "I was thinking I had to go out there and smack it." So I'm like, "All right, I just need to chill out." Play the course, don't let the course play you, kind of thing. Exactly. Yeah, yep. I'm out there to play the course. Yep. So what inspired the brand, man? What is what inspired uh, the Divot Divot Crew? Yeah. Um. So I think it was just when me and my boy started going out to golf, and again, like. When I think of golf, I think of like I gotta wear like a tucked in polo with a sweater over top with the collar coming out with some checkered pants, 
Mm-hmm. And like, I get it. That's cool. But like, that's not really my style. And mm-hmm. I felt like I needed to add my type of style into the golf, into like the golf community, which is more like a, a street urban type of wear, which means like you can go out there and golf and then you also kind of like rock it off the golf course too. I felt like it was almost like hooping. Like when mm-hmm. I hooped, I was like, all right, cool. Like I could wear my basketball shorts and a shirt off when I'm like not hooping. Right. So I was like, and people wear basketball shoes when they're not hooping. So I was like, I took that into consideration where I was like, um, I want to make something where I feel comfortable golfing in, but then I also feel comfortable just like rocking on the street. Um, no, nah, I'm not knocking people that rock the polo. Like I rock the polo too. Right. Um, but it's just some polos aren't my style and like, like the khaki pants is not really my style. So, um, and then like just wanting to be comfortable on the tee box and off the course, like that was like the big thing of like getting an understanding of like, all right, I got, I, I get it. There's like dress codes on some courses. I'm like, I'm not going to Augusta wearing like a, a t-shirt you feel me right right but like i still want to rock something that's going to be comfortable for when i'm on the at the course and stuff like that so we came up with the with the brand divot crew and just because like obviously if you want to make a divot on the green you want to be good but you also you want to be a part of the crew you feel me so like we came up with that name and then the logo is uh just like a little divot tool with the, yeah. DC in the middle so um but yeah it literally just came from me and my boy and we were just like, yo, you know what? Like, let's make something more like urban and like functional for us to rock and not so uptight and like, I don't know. Like, I, I just like the, like the golf casual look. Yeah, the, golf, the, yeah. the golf casual look. I feel like I get, I'm, I'm cool with the regular golf look, but like there's got to be a golf casual too. Mm-hmm. And I think the the biggest thing was like a lot of, a lot of companies are starting to do it now. Like, um, like Marbon, like they that that's a good golf company that like is starting making like some more swag type of like golf material. Nike's starting to make some like cool golf material to golf in now. So like we were just like, yo, we gotta ride this wave where golf is going and like we gotta hop on it. So before we get left, because that's when who knows from now, where there's gonna be a bunch of companies rocking a bunch of like fresh outfits and then we're like, damn, we should have just been on that that wave with them. So it was like just making sure we got in that wave at the right time. And like, we're like in the middle of the wave right now. So we're just trying to excel and like capitalize on that. You feel me? Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. now, when, when did you guys officially launch? Recently, so right? we, we officially launched like two weeks ago. Okay. Not, not even three weeks ago, like two, three weeks ago. Um, but like, we've been in the making for like, I'd say like two years now. Okay. Because we just wanted to get so many samples and so many like, different ideas that we had before we launched this way when we launch we can like actually start dropping stuff Mm -hmm. um and not having like people wait for us to like come up with ideas and come up with to like what to drop like we have um like right now we have a shirt with our our logo on the back Uh, we have a long sleeve shirt we have a hoodie we have a crew neck and then we have like a graffiti polo too so like there's a bunch of stuff that we're coming out with it's just we wanted to make sure we had stuff to drop so we could keep constantly dropping stuff. So we're not just like, all right, well, what are we going to drop next? Or like, what, what, like, what's the next thing that we're going to do? So like the shirts are coming out in, in June. So like next month we're going to be dropping the shirts and then probably like August timeframe, we'll probably drop like the long sleeve shirt. We'll drop the crew neck in September and then we'll rock the hoodie in like the fall or maybe we'll, it's still like up in the air on like what, right. like what we're going to drop. But like, it's still just trying to get the right product out there so that people like can one vibe with the product. Cause we don't want to have like, like a, a polo that's like, I'm not knocking Tiger Woods. Like he got his brand like Sunday, Sunday red is crazy, but like, right. that's, I'm not paying $170 for a polo. You feel me? Hell no. Yeah. So like it was just getting more affordable stuff, but also like stylish stuff too. So like, that's what we're trying to do for the community for golf. Yep. Yep. And that's, that's the thing too if you notice like i noticed actually today for example i was out on the course and there was so many compared to like the past two or three years i'm 40 there was so many kids in their early 20s out there on the golf course you never seen that before like i was one of the younger guys on the golf course in my mid-30s prior to that now you see all these kids in their young 20s they're out there in their joggers like it was a little cold out here in, in new york so they got the hoodies on, like the dry, like the dry fit hoodies on and stuff like that. 
And I'm like, it's just a whole style change. Like I was out there in shorts today because it wasn't too bad, but I had shorts and like a hoodie on. Five yeah. years ago, if I showed up to the golf course with a hoodie on, they're not even letting me. Yeah, they're not letting you on there. They're like, hey, where you gotta go? Yeah, you, you gotta have a collar on. They'd say yeah. you have to have a collar on, so I'd have to go get my coat with a hood on and throw it over and have to play with a coat on, opposed to just having a hoodie on kind of thing. So, yeah, they're, they're definitely lo loosening up with all the stuff. Um, and I think they have to. I think just the game of golf in general has to loosen up with everything. Like, you yeah, see how, how lit people get for the um. The 16th hole at the at the waste management tour. Oh, bro, it's crazy. They, like, it, they it gets crazy. Every and tournament like, could have that. Exactly, and like back in the day, like and a, a good example of it is like the way golf is moving right now. Like a lot of people are moving from like the PGA into like live golf, and they like they got walkout songs for live golfers now. They got yeah. they got like a whole little setup for them now, and like it get crazy. And it looks like it looks like. Like MLB, it looks like any like normal sport, and like mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of people were like back in the day, like a lot of people were knocking that because they like, they just didn't like think golf would become where it's at right now, and I still don't think golf is like done evolving. I think it's still going to keep getting crazier, and um, but like right now, that's what we're just trying to do is we're still just trying to hop onto like the wave and like let everyone know like hey, like golf isn't just for the the seventy year old man that's like yeah. retired. You feel me? Like, mm -hmm. everyone can golf, and it's a good time if you get out there with the boys and just knock back some shots and drinks and you just chilling. Like, That's you don't it. always got to go out to golf and be like, all right, like, we got to be quiet on the tee box. Like, you feel me? Like Absolutely not. If you've, yeah, brought, if you've seen the Pitch Putt and Puff crew out there on Sundays, we're burning it down. We got the music going, and all four, yeah. car, or four cards got their own music playing. Exactly. We're, we're talking while people are swinging. Like, on the greens, we'll turn it down. Yeah, but, yeah, on the greens, yeah, because yeah. you want to concentrate. You feel yeah, like? but that's really about it. Like other than that, it's it's a free for all for the most. Yeah, part. it's a good time out there, and that's what a lot of people just don't realize. And I think that's what they're stuck in is they're stuck in that old way where it's like, yo, it's quiet, hush hush, like don't be saying nothing, mm -hmm. and like they're not out there like actually golfing and having a good time. Like I'm out there to have a good time. I'm not. In, I'm it. not in the PGA. I'm not winning no money. I'm out there just to drink with the boys and listen to some music. So like. When I get out there, it's just a good time, regardless if I'm playing bad or not. It's just even a better time if I'm playing good. You feel me? Yeah. It's, it's a lot better. It makes but, it that much more enjoyable for sure. Exactly. So, and then I think a lot of like golf, like clubs and courses are starting to understand that they're getting more of a younger community to like actually come play golf. So I think they're starting to like kind of like relax a little bit on. Yep on like the attire so that's where i'm like all right cool. we had, we just got to capitalize on them like kind of relaxing on the attire you feel me yep take advantage of it at, you know mm -hmm. it's a good time to take advantage of it um yeah, for, yeah. for sure now, now who comes up with your you do you come up with uh the designs and the logo and all that stuff how'd you guys figure all that out yeah honestly bro it this i'm not gonna lie to you it's been all me like for the most part like all the designs and the logo is like literally been all me like and like my boy like we kind of collab together to kind of like go off of like each other like oh yo like that that design is hard because yep. like we wanted like a street design but then we also like wanted a little bit of class because it's also golf you feel me so like mm -hmm. it's kind of mixing the both of them so like for example like we got the divot crew in like cursive and then it's it's just the the divot tool so like it yep. just made sense when we came up with the design and then like just right now we just have like the regular like it's almost yeah. like clean and classy classic. Yeah, yeah like classic. a classic little bit. Yep. And then we have um on the back it has like the the big divot crew in like bold and then it has the uh, the logo around the reef in the middle. So okay. um, so a lot of them comes up with that. So like we have like the for example the graffiti tee that we have, it's like all graffiti and it's more for like obviously like people that want to rock more of those like crazy crazy so loud, yeah. polos, exactly mm -hmm. a little louder polos. So it's got graffiti like written in divot crew on it and then it's got like four and like bogey uh par like a done for a different okay. bunch of off stuff and it's all graffitied on the polo so it's actually pretty hard um so it's just like kind of mixture make getting like a mixture of like something that you would rock every day like a graphic tee and yep. then also putting into golf so like we have a couple graphic tees that we're going to come out with um okay. so it's just it's just trying to collab off of each other um uh, right now just because it's just it's just our brand so we're just trying to make it for us you yeah I mean? make it yeah absolutely that's what it's all about i mean yeah um so like that's a good thing i, I like what you're doing with the 
the casual, like the t-shirts and just kind of like not the stuff you got to wear on the golf course every day. Because think about it, like, there's not like a Nike golf polo, like anything besides like the polos and stuff to wear just like a golf shirt, just yeah. repping something besides a golf shirt for a certain company, whatever, whatever. But that's a good route to go because there's not too many companies that offer that. Yeah. And like, like I said, like I'm trying to wear like my stuff when I'm not just golfing. So if I'm rocking a polo, like I, I couldn't even tell you the last time I rocked a polo in public, yeah. like just like going out to rock a polo. Like I don't really do that. That's not my vibe. Yeah. Um, and I'm not knocking the people that are, but I'm just saying like I want something that I could just like lounge around the crib in and it's a shirt. And or if I could just go to the range and rock a shirt at the range or I could also go play on it. Like that's the whole point of like our yeah. brand. And that's the whole point of like Divot Crew is just like, yo, you could be inside the crew on and off the course. Like it's not just you got to play golf to be rocking the stuff. You feel me? I like so, that. Um, same for like. I, I like I keep referring to back at basketball, like basketball shoes. I see people rock basketball shoes like on and off the court. So yeah. uh, same with basketball attire, like on and off the court. Same thing with baseball jerseys. People be rocking baseball jerseys when they're not playing baseball. So I yep. just thought we should just bring golf into that same atmosphere of like, all right, let's start rocking stuff outside, not just on the course. You feel me? So, yeah. um, but yeah, a lot of it's literally just been bouncing off between me and my boy of just like, and like how do you get it out there and like it's hard i'm not gonna lie to you it's hard to like get a like an idea and like what do you want what do you want it to be because like i have so many ideas but i just don't know how to put them into fruition and no. like make them <laughs> so like i'm just like trying to figure out that still so like that's where i'm at in this like this stage right now so um, same thing dude even coming up with this logo like the golf ball it took me like i have no like i'm not i can't draw nothing like i couldn't mm -hmm. draw a dog i'm not creative artistic anything like that so i started just clipping things together and yeah things out and i was like all right i guess i'll rock with this and i was like copying and pasting i was like then i like i noticed i was getting a little shadow banned on like instagram and stuff on like certain videos or wasn't getting as many me and my buddy yeah. dropped the video at like the same time with the same everything and he got like Hundred thousand views on his, and I got like eight hundred. That's what I'm saying. Like, See, I'm like, come on. So then I changed it up to the smoke effect in the back, and I noticed already. I got no three notifications just today. Oh, you've reached more accounts than you did in the past thirty days. I'm like, yeah. I wonder why. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. I wonder See, and why. That, and that's what's crazy is because like all this is like brand new to me, so I don't know exactly like. I'd be uploading this stuff and then like Instagram's like, yo, you got to take that down. I'm like, damn, bro. Like, I'm just trying to put my name out there. I'm not really like, yep. I'm not that big to for y'all to really be stressing me. So like getting my, but like getting the idea out there, like that, like, same thing. Like I'm not creative and I'm like, I can't draw work to save my, my life. So like yep. just trying to get like the picture of like what I want out is like super hard to me. So like now I'm trying to figure out like, how to like reach out to people and like understand like all right hey like this is the idea i have and like i need you i need y'all to like kind of create it for me just mm -hmm. because i can't do it but a lot of the stuff that we've been doing right now is literally all just been from us and like just trying to utilize our like basically the tools that we have around us like internet and like different types of apps right. to kind of, like, mesh stuff together to make it look like this and then sending it over to manufacturing companies and being like, yo, like, this is kind of like what we're going with. Like, can you help us out with that? So, yeah. um, but yeah, it's a lot getting into it, bro. Like I can imagine just, the, the whole manufacturing, like picking the, getting samples and finding right. the material you want and right. making sure that, you know, if you're getting stuff from overseas, making sure the sizes that are U S sizes and not UK sizes and all that crazy shit. Bro, that, that shit is an understatement. Like you don't even like that shit is so crazy, especially like when they, they're overseas. They want to be talking to you at like 2 a.m. Yeah. And then like you like, yo, I got this idea. You send them the idea and then like you get the sample and then you get the sample. You're like, bro, it's not even close to what I wanted. So like the hat, like I'm I'm thankful. Like we had, I don't went through like several different companies to finally actually like get a good like hat manufacturer. Like this is all waterproof on the front and then like the back is like open and yeah. then the brim and it has like a sweatband in the brim. So like and it's a good material too. So like I was like, I think I went through like four or five different companies till I finally was like, yo, like this is what I want and like this is how I want it. And they finally like, I just like, I don't even know how I came across this company. I, a lot of it was through Alibaba and I'm going through Alibaba and I'm talking to all these foreign people and they don't like know what I'm talking about. And I don't know right. what they're talking about. So I'm, it's just crazy. 
And then I finally got the hat. And I'm like, yo, like this hat is fire. Like it's good quality. And like I've gotten hats from like Bob Does Sports. And what's yep. crazy is like I got one of his hats and I was like, bro, this is like from a manufacturing company that I didn't even want to work with because like I thought it was just too cheap and like whack. And I was like, damn, I can't believe like he's selling this. Right, so then right. I was like, I was like, if he's selling that, I mean, he obviously got a bigger platform than I do. I was like, if he's selling that brand, and I was like, my hat should be straight. Like, my I actually got a good quality hat. So right. then I started like just rocking it here and there, and then I stepped like I constantly got compliments on it. They're like, yo, that's a good quality hat. Like, we like it. And I was like, all right, cool. Like, I that's that's a hat we're rocking with. Yeah. Um, so we started. And that's the thing too. You're proud to wear it too. Well, not only yeah, your logo and everything else, and you're comfortable wearing it. That just makes it more of your brand at that point. Exactly. That's why I was like, the biggest thing was like, it started off with just me wanting to rock clothes for myself. And then I was like, yo, like, I'm not trying to recreate the wheel. Like, I'm not trying to create a different type of like clothes for people. Like, you feel me? But like, yep. it was like I just need something for myself. And then everyone was like, yo, like, I could rock that too. And I'm like, shit, like, let's just rock with it. Like, let's keep going. Um, so, yeah, I mean, for the first two weeks, I mean, I feel like we've been doing pretty good for, like, being up for, like, two, three weeks. Like, um, it's definitely – I don't know how these people be coming blown up overnight. They just need – I don't know what they're doing, but I need to sure. figure out that. But once that happens, then it's a wrap. So It's the algorithm, man. You got to find the algorithm at the right time, man. It's literally Bro. all it is. It's and all what's crazy is, is uh, I have, like, a couple, like, friends that are, like, Instagram famous and stuff like that. They got, like, hundreds of thousands of followers. And I'm like, yo, like, how do you do that? He's like, yeah, you just got to get a part of the algorithm. And I, and they kept telling me that. And I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. Like, I get it, like, the algorithm. And I thought that they were just, like, saying it to say it. But there's legitimately an oh, algorithm for yeah. it, and, like, to get your brand out there and pump your brand. And, like, you got to be doing all the right stuff. And then it doesn't help that Instagram, like, kind of cuts your stuff out or, like, TikTok cuts your stuff out. And you're just like, damn, well, like. Yeah, but if you're if you're paying for ads on there, they're not going to cut shit out. That's the thing. Exactly. If they, they, the thing. They'll start messing with you a little bit, like they're messing with us right now. They'd be in the small companies and shit. Yep. But they're gonna oh, if we you know throw twenty bucks on an ad to play for ten days or whatever. Yeah, they like all right, cool. We'll take it. Right, send it again. Send it again. Yeah, send so it again. Yeah, hey, we'll it. There. So, That's all that want. Yeah. So like, thankfully, like I noticed that and. I was like, I've been putting in a lot towards ads. Like, yo, like, let me just get my name out there and, like, just been pumping ads, pumping ads. Because I'm like, all right, like, they not stopping these ads. So, like, cool. Yep. I'll throw y'all, I'll keep doing, throwing y'all, like, the $20, $30 here and there. Yep. So I'll just keep pumping my ad out. So, I was like, all right, cool. Um, but, yeah, I mean, for the most part. And then I go, like, I go around to, like, courses on that. And I try to get a lot of feedback from people where I'm at courses. Like, yo, like, how do you, like, how do you, like, rocking with the hat? Or, like, how do you like the brand or stuff like that. So it's been always good feedback. So I, I'm glad. Keep um, grinding. Exactly. But then again, like going back to the manufacturing stuff, that's where it's just, it gets crazy. Like the t-shirt, like even the t-shirt, like finding like a good quality t-shirt um, and nothing like cheap. And then also like you want to golf in it too. So it's like, you don't want like a t-shirt that's going to be like getting sweat stains real quick and like, mm -hmm. You don't want like a really like low quality t-shirt and then wash, also, like, wash it once and it strains. Exactly. You feel me? So like finding all that was crazy, especially for like overseas stuff, because you're like, yo, hey, I want like a hundred percent cotton or I want eighty percent cotton with like not like twenty percent polyester. And then mm -hmm. they send you it. And then there's also like thread count that goes into it. Like there's a whole bunch of stuff that where I was just like, bro, I had to Google all this and figure it all out. So um that was like the biggest headache because then, because like you want to enter, you like you want to manifest it, and yep. once you get the shirt, you're like, this ain't even, like I don't even know why I'm doing this anymore. So like, yeah, you I'm pissed off because you're waiting for it to get shipped over and everything. Bro, else. you like, you like, I don't even want to do this shit no more. So you like kind of throw that shit away. You like, nah, bro, this is rad, bro. I'm done with this. <laughs> but like, keep trying to like stay motivated during the whole like, like trial and error phase was probably like the hardest part. Yeah, for sure. I could only imagine. So um, what I like to do is I, I like to wrap this up with uh, with three questions, um, all golf related, nothing crazy. What's uh, what's your favorite club in the bag? Favorite club? Favorite club. Yep. Like to go who like like to go party at? No, no. Golf club. OK, OK. I was <laughs> say, oh. <laughs> uh, my favorite golf. So 
we're blessed to have Tory Pines down here. And yep. That's a PGA course, and like that's a really nice course. But unless you, unless you him, like it's not even fun to play at because that's just that's just too hard. Right. Uh, I'd say honestly, I'd say Airwood, Airwood and Oceanside is probably like one of my no, favorite no, the, the favorite club like in your golf bag. Oh, in my golf bag, oh, ah, yeah. my, my seven iron, bro, my seven iron. Okay. Oh, that's like yeah. that's my go to. That's the one that I hit it straight with. So my seven that's- iron is. That's me too, because it's the most consistent. I'm I can do different things with it too. I can hit a bump and run. I can hit it yeah. high if I need to. Exactly. I hit, I hit my seven iron. I just got a new. Uh, my buddy was getting rid of some clubs that uh, Taylor made M sixes, and okay. I took I took them off his hands for a steal. And I hit that seven iron like thirty yards further than my old set. And I'm going like one ninety to two hundred with my with this seven iron right now. Man, that's crazy. Nah, that's crushing wild. it, crushing that's- it. Walmart is nuts with a seven iron, bro. Bro, and I literally I was playing the other day, and I was I was probably was like one ninety five out ish, and I was uphill a little bit into the wind, and I was like, I know I can keep this low, yeah. So let me see what I can do, and I hit literally this ball might have went three feet off the ground the whole way. Damn, it just just skipped up, skipped up, and then it ran up there, and I was probably it was probably like one eighty up with the seven into the wind, but see that's crazy. I wanted to see, like, I did it in the range, but I wanted to see if I could do it actually in the course. Yeah, like yeah. a challenge shot, and I was like, oh, shit, this is my car. Right seven, the 7 iron is just, it has so much forgiveness on the 7 iron that, like, you can hit, a like, a lofted shot, you get a short shot, you can hit a nice little bump and run. Like, yep. the 7 iron is, like, the utility club, and, like, I'm just, like, that's my only club where I'm like, all right, if I pull this out, like, I'm for sure in it straight, and yeah. it's going to go at least – I can get it anywhere from like 160 to 180, depending on how much muscle I'm putting in behind it. Yep. Um, but I got I got some Callaways, so like I need to go try out those those Taylor Mays that you got. No, I, I do it. I'm telling. I don't know what it was. Like these clubs, it literally every club gained 10 to 15 yards off of every iron. That's that's nuts. Yeah. That's yard. And the clubs I had before weren't like they were. The, what did I have? The Taylor Made burners. So they were they were like 10 10 12 oh, yeah. yards off. But still, like they're not a shitty set of clubs. So. Once I did that and I started getting that extra distance, I was like, "Damn, damn, yeah, that's crazy." And Technology's I mean, changed. Yeah, now I didn't even realize like how much the club does the work until um, I tried out my buddy's like Titleist, uh, like P fives or something like that. Yeah, like I got a hold of it and I was like, "Damn, this club is actually like super nice." And yeah. I was like, "All right, cool." I mean, I kind of need to switch my clubs up a little bit, so. Yeah, it's a, it's a lot that goes into the clubs, especially the like the technology. Just literally in like a ten year span of what the difference is. Bro, it's crazy. That and the golf ball too. Like I didn't even realize how like how much technology goes into the golf ball. And like we we're playing, um, we played like a little scramble tournament. And my buddy, like who's a scratch golfer, he's like, "Yo, I got these." Uh, I think they were like the Taylor made like TB five X. Yeah, it's like a club. Uh, it's a ball to make it go like way further. Okay. Like it's a, it's designed for it to really like actually go further, and then you, I like looked it up, bro. That shit is crazy. Like huh. it adds an additional like five to ten yards onto your shot, twenty yards, bro. It's, it's actually pretty nuts. Yeah, because t- like, Titleist does something like that too. They have like the t- uh, Titleist Pro V Left Dash. Yeah, and, and then, they got the uh, I think it's Taylor Made Distance. That's what it is, or the Titleist Distance. It's one of those balls, okay. and like it's legit meant for like long drives to go further. And I'm like, damn, like that's just actually pretty crazy. So there's that's a lot nuts. that goes into that stuff. That's nuts. My next question, you jumped a little ahead, but uh, is now what's your favorite course you ever played? All right, cool. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> my, my favorite course I've ever played is for sure. Um, Airwood. Yeah. Airwood and Oceanside. It's probably like one of the nicest, like relatively cheap courses. Cause it's not like super cheap. It's like a hundred dollars to play there on the weekend. But like okay. compared to like, Tory Pines and Aviara and like Madaris, like those are all like three hundred dollars, two hundred dollars courses. Um, Airwood is like that, like comfortably affordable. Like, all right, cool. Like it's a hundred dollars, but you're getting like what you pay for. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think it used to be like a PJ PGA qualifier course, so like that's like still one of my like nicest like nicest courses that I played at that I enjoy to play at. Um, they have like the I think it's like the last like back. I think it's a back like four holes. It's called the quandary. And like it they legit have like a sign that says, Hey, like you're now entering the quandary and like and it's like the definition of the quandary and it's like, I don't know, like the forbidden zone where like shit gets lost or some shit. But they're like 
they're like the last four holes are just like super hard holes, but it's still a good time and it's it's a really nice course and they keep it together. And they also have like a top flight. Um, it's kind of like a like a smaller top golf almost. Okay. And yeah. So they have that as their they have a regular driving range and then they also have the top flight where like they're like bumping music and they got like food and a grill and a bar over there. They oh, that's dope. Like that. So it's like super dope. It's like just a whole little vibe over there. So I love that course. Man, I wish we had because yeah, you know, there's no top. Like I'm probably two hours away from the nearest top golf up here. There's yeah, no, that's the thing. there's there's no top golf really in like San Diego. Mm-hmm. Um, they're starting to build two though. They're building one like by the harbor in downtown, and then they're building another one. So I'm kind of hyped for that because nice. like the closest like top golf, I think that's I think it's like North Cal. So I, it's not around me. Yeah, you can uh, you can play night golf out there too though, right? Yeah, there's a couple courses. There's one up in um. There's one up in, I want to say, like, Ontario area. Okay. It's probably, like, 45 minutes away from here. But, yeah, they got night courses. It's actually pretty pretty tight because you can play with a glow ball or you can play, like, just regular. So, And they stay open until, like, 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 during this time, they'll probably stay open until, like, 2 a.m., bro. It's crazy. Oh, that's sick. Yeah, so, like, you can kind of pop out whenever. And it's, it's a good time, too. And then now you don't got to worry about it because – like you are out with the boys at night, so you just get faded and just go play golf. So Let's go a play time. quick nine. Let's go. Exactly. Yeah. You feel me? So that's a good time out there. That's great. Uh, the last question to wrap this up: It's what one thing you want to improve on in the golf game this year, bro? Everything. Um, <laughs> now, I think the one thing I want to improve on the most is probably like still my driver, bro. Like I, I want to improve on my driver so much because I feel like. I'm just leaving so much on the table with my driver and like compared to like when I, like I said, like when I see my boy hit the driver, like he's damn near driving the green every time. And like, I'm like, bro, that's crazy. So like, and if I can leave myself with 140 yards, bro, I'm, I'm easily killing that shot. Yep. But like, If I'm topping my driver or if I'm swinging it all the way into the damn trees or if I'm like barely going past the ladies' tees, like that's a problem, bro. So yeah. like the biggest thing is for sure my driver, just because I know if I can get like 250, 300 out of my driver, like I'm cake after that. Like I got like 150 left, depending on what kind of hole we're playing. And and like I've like I said, there's only been a couple times where I've, I've like had some like crazy birdies where I've like again like it's a par five and I've my my driver is just on that day, and then my follow up shots another like 220 an easy mm-hmm. forward and I put it on the green. And I'm like, damn, like this is an easy putt, two putts in and I got a nice birdie. So like yeah. I'm trying to do that every time. You feel me? So like if yeah. I can get my driver off, off the tee box, bro, that's like, honestly, the, the main thing I've been trying to focus on is just getting to the range and literally just hit my driver all the time. So, yeah. and like, and understanding like what makes, like how to make my driver good. Cause Every time I go out, like, again, like, with my boy, he's like, yo, I'm going to hit a fade on this with my driver. And I'm like, how the hell are you doing that? Like, yep. I'm just hoping my shit goes straight. <laughs> right. You, you <laughs> can tell you, you can make it go one way or the other. I exactly. You over here thinking where that shit going to land. And I'm like, bro, I just want my shit to go in the middle, bro. So I'm like, <laughs> if I can just get that down, like, because they're like, yeah, I'm doing a low fade, low stinger, high, mm-hmm. high, high, high. And I'm like, bro, that's crazy. Like, I'm, And then he'll be pissed off because it's not – where he wanted it to be at. And I'm like, well, that's a great shot. Yeah. Like, you ain't no reason for you to be pissed off. And I'm just trying to get out there. You feel me? So, like, that's yep. my, my goal. That's me, too. I actually had some trouble off the tee the other day. Um, I usually play with this one, my one guy, uh, Fairway Mike. He's out there with me every day. He's a retired truck driver. He's the man. He uh, he couldn't play. He had to go to a doctor's appointment or something. So, I was, it was a nice day out. I was like, I'm going anyway. I got paired up with uh, a couple of guys. They were playing from the tips. I shouldn't really be playing from the tips, but I like to challenge myself every once in a while. So like, all right, let me play from the tips today. First tee shot. I think I was in my head trying to crush it because these two ahead of me just crushed it. And I was like, all right, I got to look like I know what I'm doing. Yeah. So I hit like a low ground ball. I got out to like 180. Uh, no, probably like 160. I hit an eight iron up and stuck it like five feet. I was like, all right, now I look like I know what I'm doing a little yeah, bit at least. Yeah. But then I struggled off the tee. I really wasn't getting there. And the one guy's like, yo, man, I don't like to give tips or anything. I was like, yo, I'm struggling right now. Listen, if you see something I'm doing, let me know. Yeah. He's like, try just roll your hand this way and do this and that. I'm like, all right. So we get on the next tee shot. And when I tell you, 
I did not miss a fit middle of a fairway all day. I had a nice little baby draw. I was, I was one under going into the 17th hole, ended up double bogeying and bogeying on the back nine to go, to go two over. That shit is so crazy to me. Like just a small tweak can just do so much. Like, yep. Just putting your hand over just by a little bit. That was right? it. Like, I literally saw it. Like, I took my right hand and I had it open a little bit. So, I kind of just centered it with the, uh, with the club. Yeah. And, like, my thumb was going down the middle of the grip. And it was, like, everything oh. was just smooth. I was like, yo, really? That shit and it, is... it felt so much different and so much better. Well, it's so crazy to me. Like, there's – I'll get so many tips where they're like, yo, like, put your – put your – like, roll your wrist over or, like – like keep your elbow tight or like just tee up the ball a little higher or moving the ball back in your stands a little bit. Like there's so mm-hmm. much where I'm just like, bro, like it's that simple. Like I, I'll, that's all I needed to do where I'm like, ah, oh, damn. Like, and then for some reason I just still can't repeat it for some yeah. reason. So like yeah. I like focus on like, I'll get the tip where it's like, yo, like focus on turning your wrist over. And I'm like, all right, cool. Like I'll try that. And then boom, like next thing you know, I just forgot all the other tips that I had. Like, right. You, the ball focus the on, you focus so much on your hand. You exactly. Forgot how, bro. Now you're bending your arm too much. So now exactly. So I'm like, damn. Yeah. Like, I just need to figure out how to get it all together. You feel me? And then yep. just out like that. So, but yeah, I mean, if I can just get off the tee box, I'll be alright. Like that's there you go. And that's and if it. I can just lay myself up with a nice like 140 shot, that's the that's the problem with me. Like I again, like you, like. I'm coming off the tee box. I just shank it, and they're like, "Damn, like this fool don't know what he's doing out here." Yep. And then I go and put it on the green, and I'm like, uh, five feet away, and then they're like, "Damn, all right, maybe he know what he's doing." Like, yeah. Exactly. I can recover because I'm so used to being in a shitty. Situation. Exactly. I got I'm practice so to recover. To be, exactly. I'm so used to, bro. I, I'm probably a better golfer than you. Just waiting until I get off the tee box. Yep. yep. So like, I'm just so used to being shitty ass lies and shitty scenarios that I know how to put it over there. So. I'm, yeah, at, I'm, yeah. I'm great out of the bunker, so I'm in there all the time. Exactly, bro. I'm I'm, I'm damn near at the beach every day, so I'm yeah. over there, bro. Yeah, yeah, but no, yeah, no. definitely, definitely the driver, though, bro. No doubt. Yeah, man. I so, man, I really appreciate you hopping on, man. This is a great, great conversation. Um, why don't you let the listeners know where they can find you? Yeah, bro. I appreciate you having me again. Like, I I love coming on here, and I love like getting my brand out there. But yeah, you can definitely find us at David Crew Golf on Instagram and TikTok. And then also, if you want to go purchase and check out the website, there's a our story about more in depth on like how we got into it, our mission and all that good stuff. It's And that's at davidcrewgolf.com. So feel free to take a look at all of our stuff. Y'all ain't got to go buy none, but just go ahead and take a look at it. You feel me? So, yeah. Uh, awesome, man. I appreciate your time. Make sure you go check them out. Uh, appreciate everybody tuning in. We'll talk to you soon. Peace. Hey, bro, have a good one. All right.